We've been pushing hard on the viewer with Katana 3.5, uh, recognizing that if everything is going to go into the viewer, we've got to take some steps that direction. So in this idea of having mixed ray tracing and gel, Katana 3.5, uh, which was done in December, uh, marketed in January, now has this ability to draw all the ray tracing directly to the viewport. You can move your camera around and interact with it. You've got two modes of interaction. You can say, when I move my camera, when I move my light, when I move my object, drop back to GL because it's faster. Or you can say, just give me the ray trace goods all the time. You can zoom out so you can see things that are off camera but in that uh, viewport that you want to deal with. And you can interact with them. You can switch uh, to a different viewport. And you can also start to pick objects on other viewport. We'll also include ID buffer based interactions, things like that. The benefit to this approach is it uses the Katana Live Rendering API, which means that if the render crashes, it doesn't take down the host application being Katana. Uh, we can guarantee 100% compatibility with every single existing rendering plugin that's out there. So the five commercial rendering plugins and the various custom ones that clients have all work. We've also included more work on the material workflow. So Katana 3.2, which we didn't have a good chance to come talk with you guys about, we overhauled the shading networks. These were something that were long due, like the viewer, for an update. And what we did was that we uh, decided to make them into a monolithic uh, node, sort of like a, basically a node network within or inside a node. And this has gone over incredibly well. So you've gone from basically these clunky little nodes to these really nice, elegant left to right nodes. Uh, what we're looking at now in Katana 3.5 is a shading group. Shading groups have the ability to let you basically customize inputs and outputs on that shading group. So you can then create a little shading widget. That shading widget can then be duplicated and reused. And in this case, our artist is going through and just changing uh, which texture maps are going to be referenced by this little texture loading widget. And he's gone and put in a uh, variable switch. And that can all be connected up to a graph state variable. And next thing you know, you have multiple variations being driven out of one shading network. So there's all these kinds of nice new workflows that are built on top of the, the power of Katana. We haven't had to re-architect the shading system inside of Katana. We just had to give it a new face. OK. Jen alluded to the performance. Thank you for not stealing my thunder. Uh, and it's a long story. So we were here 2018, probably I think it was February. We hadn't released Katana 3.1 yet. Uh, this is a chart that shows uh, statistics of a render test that we run. So we have a system that runs tests on a regular basis on all the builds so we can compare the performance. 2.5, we did the Windows port. 2.6, we did. Uh, the viewer API 3.0, we introduced the Hydra viewport and did a whole bunch of work underneath the hood, and then so on and so forth. Uh, November 2018 was three, Katana 3.1. So this test has over 100,000 scene graph locations, multi-million polygons, and this is equivalent of the time to first pixel. So in that span of pre-2018 to end of no, uh, November 2018, we went from 13 minutes down to 13 seconds which was already a huge uh, leap. At FMX, uh, Evalo from Worldwide Effects talked about the impact to them on, on their production floor. So we skipped on 3.2, let the guys work away, and this is some of the stats that they came back with. So Katana, is a, basically everything is a reference. So at some point, you've got to calculate where it is. So in Katana 3.5, basically that process is now almost two and a half times faster. Opscript. How many people here that know Katana have written some kind of Lua Opscript? OK, the, the five of you that use Katana. Oh, cool. Um, well, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that on a 32 thread machine, so this was a dual eight core, uh, dual Xeon eight core machine, uh, just Opscript generating a scene graph was nearly 30 times faster. Adding a th rendering plugin like 3D Light on top. Uh, adds a bit of extra overhead, but it's only 25 times faster. And frankly, I'd take that. Uh, so we're really happy with it. Now, for those of you that do know Lua, that do write Opscript, check out the dev guide in Katana 3.5. There's a white paper and some hints and tips on how to write uh, 
you know, the, basically the, a good functional Lua op script that will thread the best. Because what we found out when we were doing some of our testing and we had the Moana Island scene up and running was that um, when we, the guys did the work with Intel, at one point, they're like, we made it twice as fast. We're like, holy shit, what did you do? Oh, we just re patched up some op script. Oh, OK. But it is uh, a very significant uh, portion, so please do take a, take a look. And here was a little bonus that the guys threw in. And this is why I mean everybody at Foundry takes it very seriously. This was just the handiwork of one developer that just found uh, an area for optimization. So what you're looking at on the right-hand side is uh, what is now shipping. We patched this back into 3.1, 3.2, and 3.5. Uh, but the work was done underneath the, the 3.5 uh, development time. And this is the ability for Katana to take a render uh, that is around 4K and I think 20 AOVs. And that was the refresh speed through the monitor. So it's not doing anything about the scene traversal, but this is just how fast can we take things back from a rendering plugin, because everybody's getting really fast. And we wanted to make sure that we, uh, we're not the bottleneck. OK. So this got a lot of uh, excitement out of people. With Katana 3.5, we updated to USD 1911. Uh, and we have two versions of USD, or two implementations, I should say. We have the USD that we use for the viewport and the, sort of the connections to it. We also now have the USD that we ship as the I.O. plugin. And this means that you guys can have pipelines that use Katana with USD that have a separate version of USD from what's inside. And we just guarantee that the two don't mix. So all the USD plugins. So what did we do apart from uh, remove the PXR prefix off them? Uh, well, we uh, set it up so that they're actually program agnostic. So, or render agnostic, I should say. Uh, rightly so, when Pixar made it, they made it to work with, with RenderMan. Uh, we had feedback from clients that were working with the USD Katana plugin and said, well, it's a lot of work to make it work with anything else. So here is the Solaris demo asset that a client uh, had inside of uh, Katana. And so they exported it from Houdini 18 with the USD, loaded in through our plugins, and they rendered it with ReadLight. So it just works out of the box. So if you guys are trying to experiment, you want to see what happens with USD and the USD workflows, uh, now is your time. We've got it uh, shipped as binaries. You just have to change a couple of environment variables. Uh, another example here is uh, the USD Pixar kitchen uh, loaded into Katana via the nodes, and again, rendered with three light. So, and this was probably about missing three lines of four lines of op script. Uh, to actually pull the primitive colors on onto the shaders. Uh, all this has been open sourced. So if you guys are keen on USD and you're keen on Katana, uh, we'd love to uh, you know, discuss your pull requests with you if you've got ideas. Uh, this is only going to get better uh, through the community usage and everybody having those different ver uh, varying uh, viewpoints. But we will be the arbiter of what goes into it. Of course, we'll continue to work with Pixar. I don't expect that they're going to slow down development for their own needs by any shape or form. All right, so that's what we've done. That's what you can download tonight. What comes next? So to reach our goals a little bit faster and also give you guys some more flexibility, and us some flexibility, we're shifting to a three-release-a-year program. What does this mean? It means that we will do small releases that are easier to adopt, that are, give us the ability to shift things in the development schedule so that we don't force people to wait, uh, either for their feature because it got bumped or because we delay a release to try and fit something in. So it's going to be on this regular cycle of updates. Uh, but again, smaller, easier to learn, easier to validate and deploy in your, in your pipeline. <laughs>